Buenas tardes. ¿Qué tal? Um, so today I'm coming on behalf of Compañía Minera Cuscatlán and Fortuna Silver Mines to talk about our, our responsible operations in Oaxaca. First of all, I want to share with you that Oaxaca is a beautiful state with beautiful people, culture, and food, really good food. So if you haven't been there, please come and visit. And if you have the chance, maybe, chance, maybe we can give you a tour through our operations so you can know uh, by yourself how we work. So as I told you, we're part of Fortuna Silver Mines Company that has over 5,000 uh, employees and contractors all around the world. Uh, they have been operating for about 17 years uh, so far. And uh, we have uh, this mine in San Jose del Progreso, Oaxaca. Uh, just to give you a little guidance, San Jose del Progreso is about 50 kilometers away from the capital city of Oaxaca, which is Oaxaca. It has about 8,000 people living there, from which 5,000 live in the head of the community. And the mine is one kilometer on the main road to the, the head of the municipality. So we're really, really close into the community. We're really, really close to the capital city of Oaxaca. And it gives us uh, a really, um, a lot of, uh, exposure for everyone. Also, the, the, the road that goes from Oaxaca to Puerto Escondido, this beautiful beach that, that is in, in, in Oaxaca, is just at the side of our mine. So everyone can see our mine, everyone is aware of our operations, and we have a really close relation with the community, and this is one, one of the reasons why. Uh, as part of the Central Valley of Oaxaca, we are the main uh, formal employer of the, of the site with about 1,200 jobs generated. And those are just direct jobs for, for, uh, with our employees and contractors. But the truth is that with all our suppliers and chain, and our entire chain, uh, we benefit about 5,000 people in, around the community, just in, in this scope. We, we have uh, 47,800 hectares legally um, concession, but we only occupy 120 hectares for our operations. And this is an important issue because it's related to our uh, environmental footprint. We take uh, good care of everything that is going on around the mine and we make sure this is an underground mine, that our, um, our operations that are um, on top are safe and um, fr environmental friendly. We don't use cyanide and we don't, um, we don't have toxic waste on our tailings. One of the most important things to have a responsible operation is to, to have clear the values of your company. If you don't have clear your values, it's very difficult for you to have a sustainable vision of uh, your reputation and your license to operate. For Fortuna, we have these values that we do not only have on paper, but we take to the ground. In our execution, we do this every day with each one of our stakeholders. And who are these stakeholders? Um, in the previous uh, days, I listened to a couple of conferences related to how to communicate with who and how deep these uh, relationships are helping for the continuity of your operations. So if, we, if you want to have not only a responsible uh, operation, but sustainable throughout the time with all the changes that we face every day in our context, then you need to have very clearly your identification of your stakeholders. 
So as you can see, we have not only this identification, but also how are we going to communicate which, with each one of them. OK, so why sustainable management? Why to do things in a responsible manner? Uh, first of all, we owe to our own people, those that are working with us and with our operations and that carry on uh, the daily tasks so we can achieve our main goals as a company. So we need to um, work in a, in a safe, uh, healthy, and environmentally responsible way. Uh, for Cuscatlan, we not only have al an alignment in our management system with ISO 45000 and 14000, because as you know, that could be just paper. But what we do is we take care of all these issues, risk, and impacts on our, a daily basis. Our commitments are very important and they are not only related to uh, just a relationship with the community and several stakeholders. We are very proud to, um, to work uh, hand by hand with our policy of human rights and uh, the protection of the social environment around the, the unit. What is our goal? Our goal is uh, zero personal and environmental damage. One of the principles of sustainability is do not harm. So that's also one of our main goals, to make no harm, to, make no, uh, to, to not pollute, and to make sure that if we uh, ever have uh, something that is not the, the best way, we take care of it immediately. But social management and social responsible management is not just about identifying our stakeholders. The first step to have a, a socially responsible uh, relationship is uh, to have, okay, yeah, to have a, a corporate policy. We need a standard that tells us what is right for the company and what is in the best benefit of the company with our relationships with the communities. The next one is to understand, to, to deeply understand how the community works. Like in this case, we have the social baseline and social impact assessment. These change, community change, people change all the time. We have an operation that has been there since uh, 2011. And well, back then, the kids were playing on the ground, and today they are working in the mine. So things change, and we need to keep studying the community in a, a regular basis. With this, we can develop, we've been developing our social management programs, and we can adjust our goals on the time. So we had a, some social management uh, ways when we just begin our operations, but then we had to change because everything else was changing. And now, uh, next phase of our operation also will have a new analysis and a new approach on our social management. Things that don't change, people ask for attention, and that will always happen for mining operations because we are an important center of freedom as we give employment, we give safety for the people, security for their future, for whatever they, they want to do. They know that they have these opportunities that we give and they can achieve their dreams. So uh, they will always have this approach to us. So it's important to make sure that the way that we learn and listen from their requests is the proper way to manage expectations, to make sure that we have a, a right communication and that we don't, do, we don't make differences on the treatment with one stakeholder or the other. So we have 
uh, complaints and claims uh, management. We have guidance. We make sure that we uh, document everything, that timing is, uh, is written as a commitment with the people, that rules of what can be done and what cannot be done are written, are well communicated, and that way uh, we can reduce the conflict or the crisis derived from the conflict between their expectations and our job. Communication has to be an important part of our day-to-day -day job. In Cuscatlan, we have, uh, even when we are really close to the community, we have an office just in front of the uh, municipality uh, and make sure that anything that happens within the community is well communicated, not only uh, between us, but with the authorities. So we make sure that they play their role in the right part and that we are all working um, together. So stakeholder management, uh, it's uh, very important, not only for our operation in the San Jose mine, but also for our exploration sites. We, we have our concessions there in Oaxaca, and there are a lot of places that need to be explored. So we need to understand for each place, who do we need to talk to? Who do we need to make sure that they understand what we do and how we do it? So we are continuously working on stakeholder management, and not only locally. We know that our license to operate relays mainly on the local. But uh, we need to understand also how this uh, works with the state and with the federation of, of our country on the legislative um, area. So we make sure that we understand all the time, because it also changes all the time, our relationship, the relationship of our stakeholders with other, other participants in this uh, complex network. Oaxaca is a, a very important place for their culture, and that's because they remain a lot of indigenous communities there. So it is a, a deep part of our relationships, and we, we, we've been working hard on training, on advising, to make sure that the right people understand how to relate with indigenous people, and how to understand what they see as territory and what we see as just a job. So it is important, it's something that we've been working on and to understand uh, these guidelines to make sure that we work together with the ILO 169 for our scope as, as company and to make sure we have the right communications with the different entities so they also take care of their relations. It is in Mexico a very difficult item as you know because it's not clear in the law how uh, this is taken care of, this indigenous uh, consultation and participation to make it really clear and uh, for both parts. But still, well, we're still uh, figuring out just how to maintain social relationships, community relationships uh, with a good agreements and, and no and respecting all other people's uh, interests and expectations. And this is a continual uh, work that we do. As I told you, it's all about change. Everything is changing all the time. People, context. Maybe two years ago, we were talking about some parts of Oaxaca uh, that were flooding. Right now, we're talking about the, the drought season that has been too long. So people now is wondering where they're going to get the water for their, their animals, for their plants, for drinking, for washing. Uh, and that changes our relationships too. And that changes the conversation that we have with the community. So we need to keep that sensitivity uh, all the time and to change whatever we need to change in our management system to make sure that this relationship continues and we have our um, a responsible operation. But 
It's a lot of information, right? <laughs> so a lot of information that changes all the time, a lot of interactions, and it's not that easy to manage, just to make sure that I know that my relationship with someone uh, that's been there uh, since 2011, that we start producing, or maybe before, when we arrived to San Jose to do some exploration, it, how to know how this relationship has worked throughout the years is not easy. It's a lot of information. So what do we do? We have, um, we have strategies and we have tools um, for, for follow-up of this kind of interactions that we have with a lot of people all the time. Uh, we have processes, we have uh, formats, we have software to make sure that we don't miss uh, information. And what for? What's the point? I think yesterday I was listening to a, a talk about information and data, and, and that's the point. Data by itself is not, it's nothing. We need to interpret the, interpret the data to obtain information. So at the end of the day, to have all these records of interactions with the people in, in the community help us to, um, to record, monitor, and predict uh, incidents. Also, it helps us to demonstrate to other stakeholders the due diligence of our relationships and um, to make sure that if anything comes to happen in, in the community, maybe a, claim, a big claim or a blockade or one of these scenarios, we know who we're dealing with. Even if we change the people, we change the person of community relations and we put someone else, that other people will have the information to make decisions uh, and it will be accurate. So we use two different uh, softwares to help us with our management with the communities. One is that scope, that, that software we use uh, to record or um, um, Well, the programs that we have with the community. For example, if we have a, a housing program that we give some materials to the community, we, with, this in, uh, with, this, with that scope, we go to the, the, each person that has been benefited by the program, we get their information, and we can follow up on the accomplishment of the goals of the program. And Borealis is the other software that we use that is for stakeholder management. All the information, every interaction, day by day, is recorded there. So anything is missed, you can then enter to Borealis and download the, the information for, I don't know, maybe the municipal president, and you will get everything that we've been discussing with him, a lot of transparency on our interactions, and there will not be this, oh, someone from your team came and we agreed that, something, 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 and no one knows. So everything is recorded. No agreements are only uh, discussed, but also they are all documented to make sure that maybe later, in many years, uh, if someone else are, is interested in our project or whatever, they have the certainty too that we, do, we will not leave any passives of our operation. So uh, this, is, this is important uh, because uh, also there was, um, this will guide us in, in the next conversation and the follow-up. To make sure this is transparent and that they are not changing, we are not changing our positions to the benefit of one of, or another. Uh, one of the benefits of doing this is that all the information will be on the same place. Uh, we, will, we are working to, what we found first was that information was very dispersed before we start using these softwares. So some information was on the paperwork here, some other was in the mind of someone there. <laughs> so we needed to get everything together in just one place so anyone could go there and obtain uh, trustworthy information.
So what we are doing, we are just trying to change paradigms with a modern mining approach. Um, we know there are a lot of groups in Oaxaca. There are so many NGOs that are just uh, looking at what we do that we don't share opinions most of the time. And it's important for us to have this transparency and to keep this uh, well-managed operation, this responsible mining, just to make sure that uh, we can continue, even when we continue with opposition, it's, it's okay. There, as long as we know what we're doing and we can communicate the things that we are doing that are okay. Uh, there is a lot of work with the communities, a lot of investment on the development of the communities. This is part of sustainability and this is part of the duty for us that we need to have uh, because they are our host and they are allowing us to work there to, to make sure that we all get what we need to work, our materials, infrastructure, and renewable energies. But at, at the end, they are the host community. So we have programs like training, scholarships, infrastructure, uh, initiative uh, for productivity, and, um, and we do this and um, in a yearly basis with a budget, <laughs> but it's important because we, can, we agree with the municipality uh, how are we going to define these kind of activities and we make sure that together we follow up uh, on, the, on the program that we have. So these are some of the activities that we do I, I believe one of the most important is education because uh, it's important to see the, the community that development is not something that happens from one day to, ne to the next. It requires a lot of cap human capital, people who, who start to see things different, that they have more solutions that only questions, and education provides them with this. So, for example, the scholarship program the program for education for adults, so they can finish elementary school, middle school, it's very important. Um, the opportunities aside for employment to make sure that they can study and they can thrive because they have the economic uh, safety. And also our, our support to those that already have economical uh, activity like local handcraft, uh, agricultural, farming, to make sure that they can improve their own activities with training um, on, on new techniques or, um, or options to, to merchandise whatever they are producing. So these are some examples of the things that we have been doing in the community. Um, on the health and housing program, we have been, uh, we have not only the support with materials, we also have support for the, those that need the most for medical expense, uh, funeral expense, um, psychological attention. Also in the culture and education, the equipment for the educational institutions, and a lot of uh, help with celebrations because this keeps people um, immersed and, and creating community within the, the schools and the support is given and the, the school is very grateful so they are uh, continuously in communication with us. For sustainable uh, business, uh, as I told you before, and uh, for infrastructure, uh, uh, like roads, uh, electrical uh, network, uh, I don't know, like, uh, it, it's something that they like a lot is the, the ceiling for the, the area where people uh, do sports, I don't know how to, how to call it. Um, fence, some things are for safety for the same people.
and a lot of other activities that we carry on environmental protection, um, mainly on, the, on these issues that you see. Water is very important. I will not go uh, in deep with these environmental issues as I, I really wanted to share with you the most critical part of working in Oaxaca, which is the social relationships. But if you don't comply first with the law and, and then with your community agreements related to environment, you will not uh, thrive in your operation. That's for sure. So you need to make sure that everything that you uh, see on environment as, a, uh, as material for the operation and the community is taken care of even beyond what the law is asking you for. So, uh, for example, water uh, in, in the central valleys of Oaxaca is scarce. So we do not take water from wells. We take water from a wastewater treatment plant that we operate. So we are taking an impact to, 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 the, to the superficial water by, by taking uh, the water treated and then into our process. We have a close uh, cycle process. We do not discharge any water into the environment, any discharge. Uh, so we just uh, continue reusing the same water for the last, um, I don't know, 13 years or so. For uh, flora and fauna, uh, it's, it's very basic. It's the protection and reforestation programs that we have, a lot of monitoring. All of these goes together with laboratory analysis, with communicating the results of this analysis to the right person, Some like water, we communicate to the uh, authorities of, of the community. Uh, and we have programs together, uh, for example, for this Environment Day next month. We have uh, to, uh, activities with the authorities, with the schools, because also we need to improve the awareness of the communities into the environmental issues. So we work together to inform, to make sure that everyone is well informed, and that if there is any doubts or any question about how we work, we make sure that they come to our operations, we give them the tour to our operations, even uh, anti-mining communities, uh, NGOs, everyone has been invited to our open door uh, tour. Uh, you are all invited, of course, and make sure that you get your own vision of what responsible mining looks like. So just to, to close with this, uh, it's very important for us to share again, uh, we don't work just because we know we have to do it, but also it's, it's deep rooted in, in Fortuna principles. So we have our human rights policy, which integrates uh, uh, international standards related to human rights like International Labor Organization, the International Letter of Human Rights, and the United Nations Guiding Principles of Business and Human Rights. We also have our anti-corruption policy and our ethics, business conduct, and complaint scheme. So we have a community uh, uh, system for complaints, for receiving complaints. But the Fortuna has another way to get complaints, so anyone can complain <laughs> if they want to, and everything is taken seriously, it's investigated, and to make sure that we provide the best and the most healthy relationship with uh, our internal and external stakeholders. And that will be it for me. I think I made it in the right time. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's any questions, or comments? <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much. Muchas gracias.